Cancer and Biochemistry 25, Sunlight and its Role Against Cancer. Hello, it's July 10, 2019, and I'm Dr. Colleen Huber, a naturopathic physician in Tempe, Arizona, here again in my ongoing video series on cancer and biochemistry. Today I want to discuss the role of sunlight against cancer. What a strange topic, right? You may already have applied many times such substances as oxybenzone, methyl cinnamate, and the other carcinogenic ingredients in sunscreens. Even if you went with a so-called natural sunscreen, you have likely been subject to hormonal upheaval created by zinc oxide, which is an endocrine disruptor. Definitely not something you want entering your or your children's bodies. I happen to live in Arizona, one of the sunniest spots in the world, that is, having among the least annual hours of cloud cover. I do not use sunscreen at all, ever not back in childhood, nor in adulthood. I do work indoors as a physician, but when I go outside to play tennis or to hike, I do not use sunscreen. If I wanted a sunscreen, I would use coconut oil or carrot oil for the least harmful effect that I know of in a sunscreen. Let's use some common sense when assessing risks from the sun. Intense fear of the sun began only a couple decades ago. Many of us are not too remotely descended from farmers, fishermen, construction workers, and others who spent their working lives outdoors. How many of your ancestors died of skin cancer? Hmm? Aha! And contrary to our generation's propaganda, many of our ancestors lived to their 70s and 80s. How many of those ancestors ever even heard of sunblock? Okay, I think that answers your question about how threatening the sun is to your own longevity. If you know somebody who keeps reaching for sunblock, you may want to ask them to consider their family history before applying these risky substances. Also keep in mind that sunscreen actually prevents your skin from making vitamin D. Some good basics about our skin's vitamin D production may be seen at this website. So that leads us to conclude that the sun is unlikely to damage us if using moderate exposure, certainly not with a severe sunburn or sunstroke. But can the sun actually benefit our health? And does it play a role against cancer? Likely, all of us are aware of the essential role of sunlight in turning our cholesterol into vitamin D. When sunlight reaches our skin, even just the face and arms, for even 20 minutes is usually enough, without any kind of chemical blocks, please. When the sun reaches our skin near the middle of the day, you can benefit from both ultraviolet A and ultraviolet B light. When the sun is low in the sky, on the other hand, those wavelengths, about 280 to 400 nanometers, cannot reach you so well. So, full sunlight on clean skin starts the vitamin D production process. That process continues in our kidneys and the liver to reach its final and most useful form. Vitamin D has well-known effects against cancer, many different effects which will be the subject of a future video in this series. Today I want to talk about how the sun benefits our mitochondria and uses the mitochondria to divert body resources away from the cancer pathway. In this study from the Journal of Cell Science, sunlight was shown to be used to produce ATP in the mitochondria. You will remember from our previous videos in this series that the whole purpose or finale of complex mitochondrial biochemical processes was to produce ATP, which is the currency of energy in our bodies. It is the fuel with which we move, think, reproduce, and otherwise thrive. What the scientists learned was that in various mammals, a chlorophyll-rich diet gave them, obviously, chlorophyll metabolites over here. Where do we get chlorophyll? Indirectly from plants, and they, in turn, make it from sunlight. So it turns out that these chlorophyll metabolites acted as reducing agents for CoQ10, right here. That is, the chlorophyll metabolites donated electrons to CoQ10 here in the electron transport chain. And that was necessary to get the CoQ10 to be able to move electrons down that chain. So the chlorophyll metabolites are really helpful for this function. Here we have sunlight converting to energy, not just in plants, but indirectly in our own bodies as well. Did you ever feel really good after a day out in the sun? Or from eating a green salad? Or just super healthy after eating Brussels sprouts or pesto or broccoli? Or even more powerful, dandelion greens? Just look at these beautiful foods. This is from India.com. It is not just that your liver said, thank you, mama, for those beautiful greens having a choleretic and cholagogue effect, rinsing toxins from your liver. Chickadee Apothecary 
gives us this lovely picture of dandelion. Do you get it? It's food and it's medicine. They say that Hippocrates saw no contradiction in that. He said, let your food be your medicine and your medicine be your food. But it's not just that vitamins A, C, and K that your body gained from those lovely greens. No, it's not just that. It's that downstream products of chlorophyll here actually helped you make ATP. And that is a powerful and energizing thing. Yes, I know, the Keto Coalition says meat, meat, and only meat. But you know what? They could also benefit, really benefit from adding some greens, which is why I think paleo is the best diet. A combination of vegetables and animal products is the most nutrient-dense and even better nutrient-varied diet that I know of. So that's what we eat at home. That's what I mostly recommend to my patients. Chlorophyll has another benefit in that it binds to many cancer-causing nasty molecules such as aflatoxins and heavy metals and aromatic hydrocarbons such as are found in air pollution, binding those molecules and making them harder to absorb and easier to excrete from the body. Chlorophyll also upregulates phase two detoxification, but I digress. Oregon State University discusses these effects here. Well, that's all I have for you today on the topic of sunlight. It is an energizer for us by way of the plants that we eat. I'm Dr. Colleen Huber. It's July 10, 2019, and thank you for watching.